Hey y'all, Exterminator87 here again. I'm uh, bringing a video a lot of people have been requesting off and on throughout the years. It's on the Ruger Super Red Hawk and 454 Casol and 45 Colt. I did a couple videos of that about five years ago. Part one and a part two. Part 3, kind of a remake of those, I think. You're going to see more shooting. I'll talk about it some. Because that was my first, that was one of my first videos where I talked about the gun a little bit rather than just cinematic shooting, editing type of stuff. I've been doing a little more of that lately too, though. I don't really have a set format on this channel. Um, I hope to showcase this gun a little bit more in this video. I'll talk about it some, some of the history. I'll show you some really nice up close video of it and a lot of fun stuff blowing up so i hope you stick with it and watch it all the way through i think it'll be a good one let's shoot it the 454 casole was originally developed as a wildcat cartridge by dick casole and jack fulmer in 1957. the basic design was a lengthened and structurally improved 45 colt case which has been a popular choice amongst shooters since the days of the old west the 454 uses a small rifle primer instead of a large pistol primer like its 45 Colt parent cartridge due to its strength in dealing with the high chamber pressures of over 60,000 CUP found in the 454. 454 Casol is one of the most powerful handgun rounds available and is said to be able to generate up to 75% more recoil energy than the 44 Magnum. More on that later. On some loads, you're looking at 1,900 feet per second and 2,000 foot-pounds of energy from a revolver. It lost its Wildcat status in 1997 when Ruger introduced the Super Red Hawk, chambered in 454. Much like 38 Special and 357 Magnum, 45 Colt can be safely fired in any 454 Casol revolver, just not the other way around, for obvious reasons. Firing 45 Colts expands the versatility of the revolver as well as reducing ammunition cost and wear to the gun. The 454 Casol really shines for hunting medium and large game, metallic silhouette, and predator defense. The 454 version holds six rounds, and I think it's one of the only 454 revolvers that is a six shot, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember what the Freedom Arms is off the top of my head. And the Taurus Raging Bull I know is a five shot. That was the first uh, 454 I ever fired back in 2007. So it's been 10 years for 454 first timer for me, as well as the 20th anniversary of the Super Red Hawk itself in 454. How about the tried and true watermelon? Barnes XPB hollow point. Platinum tip hollow point. Silver bullet. I know I have a scope on this thing, but I'm not going to take it too far today. I like to showcase the recoil and stuff exploding together most of the time, and it's hard to do both. Plus, it's been a while since I've had this out, so it's a plinking kind of day.
This wasn't my first 454 gun that I fired. But it's a lot of fun to watch people shoot a 454 for the first time. Even had a good punch almost as it. much fun shooting it yourself. Like a lot of big boards. I got a couple <laughs> clips here that I'd like you to see from the past couple 454 Super Red Hawk videos. Specifically on this, just kind of a throwback. You might enjoy right. it. I picked out yeah, a couple there. from some of my other big range videos. <laughs> Let's check it out for a minute. That car is fun. Nice. Got it. Nice. I like it when that one's good. That's still fun to watch for me. It's like memories, kind of. The Super Red Hawk was originally introduced in 1987 in 44 mag. The 454 version came out 10 years later in 1997 and is currently available in a few different configurations, such as the 2.5 inch Alaskan models and the 5 inch Toklat, and barrel lengths ranging from 6.5, 7.5, and 9.5 and on basic models, as well as chamberings from the 454 Casol, 480 Ruger, 44 Magnum, 41 Magnum, and now 10 millimeter. My revolver features the 7.5 inch barrel. The overall length of this particular model is 13 inches. This configuration weighs approximately 52 ounces unloaded without the scope. The Super Red Hawk frame features an extended frame with more metal in the top strap, sidewalls, and barrel mounting areas to handle the most powerful big game loads and features a triple locking cylinder. The frame on the 454 Super Red Hawk is the same as the 44 versions but the cylinder had to be made with different alloy and heat treating processes to increase its strength for the higher pressure rounds. Most of the revolvers now are offered in satin stainless. My Super Red Hawk is the original target gray finish, which I think looks fantastic. The newer guns also sport Hogue finger groove grips. The one on this one is the old laminate wood insert and rubber, which feels and looks pretty good, I think. Sights are a fixed front with an adjustable rear. Ruger includes 1 inch scope rings with the Super Red Hawks. They use a short rear ring and a long front due to the differences in frame height, and generally the scope can be removed and reinstalled without altering zero or eye relief. As covered in part 2, my particular Ruger is topped with a Bushnell Elite handgun scope. It is a 2 to 6 power with a 32mm objective lens. The Bushnell Elite handgun scope features a multi X reticle with all weather rain guard HD. It's 100% waterproof, fog proof, and shock proof. The scope features 20 inches of constant eye relief. I went with this scope due to cost and the fact it's said to be recoil tested with the meanest of handgun cartridges, including the 454 specifically. So far, so good. With this setup, it gives me a little something different to shoot big bore wise and I found it to be the most enjoyable, particularly on this outing. This is the most rounds I've put through it in one sitting. I was just having way too much fun with it.
<laughs> Water makes a difference. As I said before and in the other video, the Super Red Hawk will also chamber and fire the 45 Colt, its parent cartridge, especially if you want a little break shooting the 454. A little bit cheaper uh, planking or target ammo would get good with it. Most people buy some 45 Colts to shoot in it once in a while. We'll go ahead and load some 45 Colts into the gun so you can see it in action with some of those. 45 Colts in the gun. 45 Colt, 225 grain, lead, soft wad cutter. Five cold.
How about this for the next round, all right? To demonstrate the difference, I'll put a couple 45 Colts in with a 360 gram Buffalo Bore 454 round. 45 Colt, the 454 360 grain round, and another 45 Colt. I'm sure you'll notice a difference. I probably will too. 45 Colt. 454 and another 45 Colt. Let's do that again with the 45 Colt and a 360 grain 454. In one of the previous videos, some of you wanted to see how a 454 compared to a 44. And so, we got another big bore out here sharing the spotlight with the Super Red Hawk today. I brought a Colt Anaconda with a 6 inch barrel compared to the Super Red Hawk 7.5 inch barrel. Uh, I brought the closest rounds I had. Here's a 240 grain jacketed soft point 44 Remington Magnum. A 260 grain jacketed soft point 454. There's not a huge difference between the two in size. The 454 is a little longer, obviously. It can shoot heavier bullets in most cases. And it's a 45 caliber versus a 44 caliber. And the primers for the 454 uses a small rifle primer instead of a large pistol primer like the 44 Magnum. Sorry, I don't have the ballistic gel or anything like that. And I'm stealing this directly from my 460 versus 500 video. This is even some of the wood I used before. We got 2x10s. I just put seven of them here today. and. If it goes through, it goes through. I'm gonna shoot it first with the 44 Magnum, or then I'll shoot it with the 454, and we'll just see how many planks of wood those two rounds go through. A little basic backyard test. Just a real quick glance, here's our two test subject. The video's 454 Super Red Hawk versus the Colt Anaconda 44 from a previous video. All right, 44 Magnum first. Through the planks of wood, here we go. Aim it at the center. Check out what we got. There's our one hole from the 44. It split that board. It is lodged right there in the third board. 454 Casol's turn. Same setup, shooting through the two by 10. Here we go. So, the 454 round went extremely low. It went to three no problem, four no problem through the end there five and under six pretty easily went entirely under seven and then it buried itself in the ground underneath i think the 454 deserves a second shot i'm gonna aim higher this time see if that one's any better so the 454 i hit it up near the edge i guess i pulled to the left a little bit it actually arced over enough to where it kept in the wood that's pretty awesome right there you can see the destructive power it hit here and there it is in the fifth board so it went through two more boards than the 44 magnum with just 20 more grains of bullet weight that's wedged in there good maybe i can get it out when i get home 44 mag versus 454 casual recoil has been a question i've had a time or two I find the 454 to be noticeably a bit sharper and faster in recoiling when using similar bullet weights when comparing 240 grain to 360 grain. The game changes just a little. You know, the recoil on this gun, while it's pretty brisk, it's not that bad, but it will beat you up if you overdo it like a lot of guns will, and I've been getting that a lot lately with the Mossberg shockwave and all that good stuff.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's the 20th anniversary of the Super Red Hawk and 454. Perfect timing. Five years since I made a video on it, just for it. I think it was kind of a reboot of my first two. I think it had a lot more shooting than them two videos did too, and a lot more stuff blown up and all that good stuff you've come to expect from our recent videos. Um, hope you continue to keep watching us. Like, favorite, subscribe. Keep watching, keep shooting. We'll see you next time. Exterminator 87 out.